Think about this, ladies and gentlemen. Three times in his letters, the Apostle Paul calls the gospel of the uncircumcision, the gospel of the transcendent grace of God, he calls it my gospel. In Romans 2.16, Romans 16.25, and 2 Timothy 2.8, my gospel. This guy is either the biggest egotist in the world, or he had a distinct message, distinct even from the gospel that Jesus heralded on the earth when he said, Jesus said in Matthew 4, 17, he went around, the scripture says, Matthew writes, heralding the kingdom of the heavens. Jesus would say to people back then, near is the kingdom of the heavens, the kingdom of the heavens. What kingdom was he talking about? Well, when Jesus was on earth, he spoke only to Israelites. I came only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, he said in Matthew 15, uh, 24. So was that the gospel to the nations? Far from it. It didn't go anywhere near the nations. When Jesus sent out his disciples, he told them, don't go to a road of the nations. Go only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And so now we got this guy in Romans and a second Timothy calling a, a gospel, my gospel, mine. If this doesn't distinguish it, from the gospel Jesus was preaching in Matthew 4, 17. And Peter's gospel, if anybody would have a claim to the gospel, Jesus gave the keys of the kingdom to Peter. And Paul, if Paul is taking Peter's gospel to a different group of people, Paul would have to say, this is Peter's gospel. Again, this was the uh, misimpression I was always under, that um, Peter is only one guy, he's fat, you know, not in great shape. Uh, he's got a wife, he's got a kid, a couple kids. He's got a mortgage. So he can't get the kingdom message out to enough people. He's kind of bogged down at the home front. He's got to mow the grass. And uh, so Paul comes on the scene. Here's this single guy, lots of energy, on fire for Christ. And Peter's, thank goodness, the troops are here. The cavalry has arrived. And so he takes, he hands Paul the baton, passes Paul the baton, and then Paul takes the same message to the nations where Peter just can't reach. But that is not the case. And it's not the case, first of all, because Paul calls this my gospel. How audacious of him. How bold. Like he's stealing Peter's copyright. He's infringing. He's uh, plagiarizing it. But no, it is a distinct message. And to confirm that, we need only go to Galatians 2 verse 7 when uh, Paul says, I have been commissioned with the gospel of, of the uncircumcision according as Peter of the circumcision. There it is, plain as day. The circumcision gospel to Israel belongs to Peter, passed on to him by Christ, and the gospel of the uncircumcision or the transcendent grace of God with no law, no baptism, uh, no Jew, nor Greek, with justification instead of forgiveness. And yes, today we're gonna to get into the differences. Yes, this gospel belongs to Paul. It was passed on to Paul by the glorified Christ. The terrestrial Christ passed on the circumcision gospel to Peter. The glorified Christ uh, passed on the gospel to the nations, the gospel of the grace of God to Paul. So Paul and Peter each got it from Christ, each got their distinctive messages from Christ. Oh yeah. But, um, one got it from the terrestrial Jesus, another from the celestial Jesus. I've never had this beer before. I'm not a beer drinker, but I just started to get a taste for it. And I, oh, the only reason I got this beer is because there's a cute girl. There's a cute girl on the label. That's the only reason I got this. It's called Little Something. A Little Something. I'm having a little something here. Now, look at this. We're going to get into the 31 differences starting right now. In fact, I've already started. I've been going on for four minutes now. The, here's the list yeah, on page 233 of The First Idiot in Heaven, written by your favorite author, Martin Zender. Look, look at this. Here's the list. If you're watching the, the patio cam, here's the list. 30, 
Look at that. 31 differences between these two Gospels. And they're listed right there. Look at that if you're watching the patio cam. Wow. And after that, I elaborate on their, their bullet listed here. And then I elaborate on them from page 234 onward. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you this graphic in the front here because this is really good. 31 differences. If you're watching the patio cam, you don't have to be watching the patio cam, but it will help. This is Paul. See, that's an actual drawing of Paul. It looks just like him. Here's Peter over here. This is called the Gospel of the Uncircumcision. This is called the Gospel of the Circumcision. I can't see this very well. Oh, and the verse reference there is found right here, Galatians 2.7. Believe me, this is an important chart to have. This chart alone, and even just this top part, is worth getting the book. I feel that strongly about this chart. Ah, very, very pleased with it, very, very proud of it. And I think I'm gonna toast myself with a sip of a little something here, hang on. Okay, thank you. Now, Jesus Christ is the centerpiece of both Gospels. Don't think he's not. Don't think he's not. Again, he gave the Israel Gospel to Peter. Uh, to Peter, that's Peter over here. And he gave the, the Gospel of the nations, of the heavenlies, to Paul. Now, I'm going to read this quote from Jesus Christ here in between these two. I can't read it if I'm showing it to you. It's a quote from Galat. Colossians 1.20 Through him to reconcile all to him This is what God is going to do through Christ Through him to reconcile all to him That is all back to God Making peace through the blood of his cross Through him whether those on the earth Or those in the heavens And there is a picture uh, There is a drawing of the earth Right there that's Peter's realm See that I'm having a difficult time here There's the earth There's the heavens There's Peter there's his name right there. That proves that's him. It says Peter. There's Paul right there. And this is the verse that ties it all together. Here's a graphic of Jesus Christ on the cross. And while he was on the cross, he was doing two things simultaneously. He was the lamb being sacrificed, the, the anti-type, the, the substance of all the types. He was doing that for Israel, but he was doing something far deeper for the rest of humanity and for the universe at large. He was doing it all on the cross. Look at this. In Acts 3, 24, verse 25, you'll read this. Peter's gospel, that is the gospel of the circumcision, is in accord with the prophets. In accord with the prophets. Acts 3, verses 24 and 25. Over here, however, in Ephesians 3, 8 through 10. In Ephesians 3, 8 through 10. Oh, right here. I can't even, it's hard for me to see. It's very small print. Ephesians 3, 8 through 10. Paul's gospel is called, this is very significant. It's called a secret. A secret. Peter's gospel was not a secret because it was disclosed to Abraham. And in this verse, Ephesians 3, 8 through 10, Paul calls his message a secret that is now revealed, a secret that is now revealed. How could it possibly be? The gospel that Jesus and Peter were teaching, first Jesus, then Peter. Because remember, Paul says of Jesus Christ, and I mentioned this verse down here that Jesus Christ was, uh, I, I quote the verse here, a servant of the circumcision to confirm the patriarchal promises. There it is. Jesus Christ, under Peter's gospel, a servant of the circumcision right here, to confirm the patriarchal promises. Romans 5.8. On the Paul side of the equation here, he's the firstborn of every creature. Colossians 1.15. The firstborn of every creature. That is bigger 
What a difference, the firstborn of every creature compared to the servant of the circumcision. So limited, as I've been saying, I've been saying that on the beach. Somebody wondered yesterday, well, I got kicked off the beach. If I'd been drinking beer on the beach, I very well could have been kicked off the beach, but no, I just don't want to go to the beach. I'm afraid somebody's gonna, you know, lust after my equipment, uh, so to speak. So look at this, Christ on the cross, doing two different things at once. He's a servant of the circumcision. That's the message he gave to Peter. But he's also the firstborn of every creature. Every creature is going to come back to God through Paul. And that message comes only by Paul. The purpose of the circumcision gospel passed on by the terrestrial Jesus to Peter is to reconcile those on the earth and there again is the earth i had didn't point this out before i have a nice little moon and stars and space because this is this is because through paul's message and those called through paul's message who become members of the body of christ their job through christ is to reconcile those in the heavens look what we have so far the gospel of the circumcision the gospel of the uncircumcision Peter is the chief of the gospel of the circumcision, Paul of the uncircumcision. For that, you go to Galatians 2.7. Jesus Christ is to reconcile through his cross everything to God, both that in the heavens and that on the earth. Paul's for the heavens, Peter's for the earth. Paul's message was a secret, hidden, before the disruption of the world, hidden and revealed through Paul. Peter's gospel was in accord with the prophets. Peter's gospel is traditional. See that word traditional there? That's traditional. Paul's gospel was, if I can coin a phrase, I didn't coin it, it's not in the Bible, unheard of. It's unheard of. Another way of saying that is nobody had ever heard of it. Uh-huh. You can quote me on that. What? is to become of the followers of the gospel of the circumcision. Well, Revelation 5.10 says that right down here. They shall reign on the earth. Remember, I gave you that ver verse on the beach. They shall reign on the earth. Paul's gospel, they reign among the celestials. Oh, Zender, you got a verse for that? Of course, I have a verse for everything. Ephesians 2, 6, and 7. Compare Revelation 5.10 to Ephesians 2 six and seven and you will these are the gigantic differences these aren't even the differences listed underneath here look at all these i got 30 31 these are the major differences which is why i'm sorry i keep moving this around it's probably making you dizzy but i'm having a difficult time here okay all right we're going to go to difference number one peter was called in Israel Matthew 418 Peter called in Israel perfect because the whole ministry of Jesus and Peter is in the land of Israel Paul is called outside of Israel Acts 9 3 this was not by accident nothing in Scripture happens by accident this is difference number one there are probably more than 31 but I think 31 is enough to convince anybody the reason Paul was called outside of Israel is evident in that the gospel of the uncircumcision goes chiefly to the nations. And so in the foreordination of God, the foreplanning of God, God had saw the Pharisee developing a madcap murderous scheme to go to another city to persecute those who believed in Jesus Christ. That city was Damascus. Uh, Saul little realizing that um, Jesus Christ was going to, the glorified Christ was going to wait until he got out of Israel because you see, <laughs> nothing's an accident. He's not called, he could have been, could have easily been called in the land of Israel. That's where he lived. He was a Pharisee. He lived and worked in the temple. He just got, got an itch one day, I'm going to Damascus. That's outside of the land of Israel. And that's when Paul, Saul, was called because 
his ministry would be reaching those who were not Israelites to the extent that he would have to call it my gospel. That is huge. Three times. Romans 2.16, Romans 16.25, and 2 Timothy 2.8. My gospel. Oh, before I go on, I wrote a newsletter this past Sunday on August 19th, 2018. It's called Why Christians Love the Book of James. It's volume seven, issue 33 of the ZWTF. Go to martinsender.com and uh, scroll down the archives and go to that newsletter, read that newsletter. It will show you how James is his actual brother of Jesus Christ, he grew up with him brushed his teeth next to him, probably had a bunk bed with him. Uh, they both sent Mary Mother's Day cards. Jesus and James were brothers. And James's gospel, uh, James's letter, I say, is consistent with the circumcision gospel. It's James to the 12 tribes. I could do a whole video on James, and maybe I will. James to the 12 tribes, that's the address on the envelope. And, most Christians love James. James is very physical. James is related to Christ physically, and he knows only the terrestrial Jesus. He knows only the baptism of, of Jesus. He doesn't know anything about Paul. He, his letter has not one blessing coming from God to humanity. It's all about slapping the Jews upside the head to behave themselves. In fact, he's writing the book in James 4.4, 4, this becomes evident, to adulterers and adulteresses. So it's on a very low plane spiritually. And James even goes as far as to say in chapter 1, don't blame God for your problems. It's your own stupid fault. Which, that's true relatively. And sure, we exhort one another not to be sinning, as Paul does. I think Romans uh, 15.34 or, or something. But, but Paul doesn't hesitate to also declare the absolute truth that sin and death comes through one man through Adam. James goes nowhere near the absolute truth. That's why Christians love it. The absolute truth makes humanity very small. Relative truth is like a small pond and people feel like big fish. And so a lot of people like to feel like big fish. Um, I, I like to feel little, tiny and small. I like that. And when you look at the heavens, it's very embarrassing. You look at the heavens, you go, oh my God, I'm, I'm small. And yet God cares for me. But this is the difference between James and Paul. Paul is Mr. Absolute and Paul makes the creature look very small. James magnifies humanity and says, you better shape up or ship out. Go read my newsletter, Why Christians Love the Book of James. It will help you see that James does not belong anywhere near the letters of Paul. But of course, the complication is <laughs> that James is in the same Bible as Paul. And that's why Paul says in one place that we have to correctly cut the word of truth. King James says rightly divide. Paul says correctly cut. We must make divisions not the most people think when they when they hear rightly divide the word of truth oh, i'll just divide it in the old testament and new testament that'll be good enough won't it martin no that won't be good enough at all how would you like to go to a surgeon and you ask the surgeon where he's going to be operating and the surgeon says on the top on the top yeah as compared to the bottom no we need to be more specific than that and rightly uh, even more so with Scripture, rightly dividing the Scripture. You can't just divide it in the Old Testament, New Testament. Even in the so-called New Testament, we have to make distinctions. And the distinction to be made is to distinguish Paul's letters from everybody else's. i got time to go to the second point, I think. Let me read what it is first. Proclaim the one Israelites, proclaim. Yes, this goes along with the first point. Peter's message, the evangel of the circumcision, was proclaimed among Israelite. Uh, speaking of James, James 1.1. 1, 1. That's my verse reference here, James to the 12 tribes. And 1 Peter 1.1. 1, 1. Peter tells us plainly who he's writing to. I believe Peter's writing to the Jews in the dispersion. However, contrast that with Paul, who says he has proclaimed his message among the nations reference for you there, Ephesians 3.8. We cannot imagine from our distant day here, 2,000 years subsequent to these activities, how radical it was that the nations were even visited by God. Remember, even when Jesus was on earth, a woman of the nations had to beg him to bless her. And she took a place under the table, basically, and not literally, but 
Um, Jesus said, it's not right to give what belongs to the children. Take the children's morsels and give them to dogs. Yeah, he called this woman a dog because that's what the nations were to Israel. It's not right to take the bread, the food of the children of Israel, give it to dogs. And this woman just persisted. And she said, Lord, even the dogs eat the scraps from the master's table. Jesus got like, tears in his eyes. Like, wow, that's faith. And she took her rightful place. You know, she first addressed him as son of David, and he didn't say anything to her. He was rather rude. Son of David. And then, no, and then she just said, Master. She, as son of David, she had no claim on him whatsoever. But when she said, Lord, she just called him Lord, Master. It's a generic term for a placer, a subjector, an owner, an owner. It's like, Lord, help me. Even the dogs eat scraps from the master's table. Jesus said, wow, yeah, you get what you want for that. Good one. That was a good one, lady. That's what Jesus said. I'm paraphrasing him. I'm not sure that he said that at all. But we forget what a, sh what a shock it would have been and what a shock it was for even someone to talk to a Gentile, to a dog. Disciples were shocked when Jesus was speaking to the woman at the well. They were shocked. What? What's he doing? Because she really, she was a Samaritan woman. Samaritans were close relatives, close but no cigar. Plus she was a woman. The heck's he doing? Uh, but to see a distinct message from the glorified Christ going to the nations, being proclaimed among the nations, Ephesians 3.8, we forget what a shock that is. We forget how radical it is. But after all, Paul is Mr. Radical.